Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, we're going to return today with another video on ISP config, and today we're going to talk about the cons of ISP config. So if you're unfamiliar with the software, we've already done a pros video about it, and I did mention that I was going to look at it as a little bit more comprehensive way to see if this is a viable cPanel alternative. And uh, yes and uh, no at the same time. So you can go back and have a look at my previous video for the cons to see the positives about it. And uh, today we are going to spend some time on the negatives. So if you are looking to come over here from cPanel to ISPconfig as an end user only, somebody without a lot of knowledge of servers or or things like that, you're probably in for a rough day. It is not nearly as intuitive. You log into a cPanel account and you have one click, you can create an FTP user for an individual website, an individual file folder, or for the, the whole account in that particular setup. Well, you don't have any such thing in ISP config. In fact, everything gets completely isolated. Well, this actually does carry with it an extra very good level of security. The downside is it makes managing things a royal pain. To give you an example of what I'm talking about, I'll come over here and one of my clients, I have the domain name thomasmorosky.com and then I gave it a subdomain subdomain.thomasmorosky.com. Now the problem is, is that each one of these is treated as a complete separate website. And in all honesty, that's kind of how even cPanel and other servers will treat it. Different websites. The problem is there are no shared resources possible. There's no single PHP my admin login that's going to give you any access to all the databases in that one client account. Now, I'm not talking about me as an admin having one master login to see all of the sites. That would be a little bit ridiculous and a little insecure. But if I'm a single client and I have multiple websites or even a subdomain inside of a website, I would figure one FTP account could give me some access to everything within there. And nope, that's exactly not the function it has. So here I have my uh, FTP account here, and I actually have to pick which website it is going to go to. I don't have a choice in the matter. There is no, hey, I can do this website and this website. That again is decent for security, but in the case of running my new publishing company website, I have about six different sub subdomains in there that are using, and if I have to log into a different FTP account to manage something in each one of those, it is going to frustrate me to the point where I don't even really want to use the platform. And that is exactly the type of function we have. So either I need to create a separate FTP account for each one of those, or what I've actually taken to do is I'll just log into my ISP config as the client, and then when I need to change something in a different one, I'll literally just come in here and just change the website. That way I can keep the credentials the same and just change the website on the control panel, and then go into FileZilla and allow it to control the FTP from there. Ditto on the databasing. While you do have the ability to use PHP My Admin, there is not going to be one account level or client level login for PHP My Admin to view all of the databases on your individual server, which means all of those crazy passwords that you need to have for your databases, you're going to need to now keep track of those and log into those accounts individually, manually each time. And to me, that starts becoming sloppy enough to actually hurt security. While it's there for security reasons, the biggest downside of that is now I'm gonna have a either a password list or just a bunch of other crap laying around that I probably shouldn't be have laying around just to keep track of all of these different logins, which gets very encumbering if I'm running a business that has several different databases for whatever happens to be reason. So those are some of the, the issues I found. Next big con that we have found. Oh yeah, we're going to get to it. The, um, the auto SSL, the auto SSL works kind of <laughs> when we go in to edit a domain or a, a website here, we have an auto domain. So we can set a, an auto domain, www. 
The problem is if you set an auto domain, www, or you set a root whatever domain, so you can either get to the website at www or without the www, auto SSL will fail to work. It, and what it ends up doing is it doesn't get you an SSL for your particular website. What you have to do is you have to go with the none. And then under the redirects, you have to go with a no redirect here, although you can go into the SEO redirect www, back down to the non www. And then when you run the SSL update, then you're going to be able to get an SSL there. You're not going to get an SSL for www and for your non WW versions. You're not going to get an SSL for your mail server. You're not going to get one for an FTP route. There's a variety of different things you can't do. So basically each domain name that you have, you are limited to one SSL through Let's Encrypt. This is going to throw an error if you try and run it any other way. And it actually took me about an hour and a half to figure this out. So I end up having to come into here, turn all redirects off, turn off the auto www, and I can only access the site without it. And that's the only way to get a proper SSL working. If you are unaware of how that works, uh, it's going to be a rough day while you figure that out. Hopefully, this will help you figure that out. Okay, the next thing that we want to look at is if you are, this is applies if you're used to cPanel. You create your, your uh, cPanel user and inside of there, it's gonna automatically create you a catch-all FTP account. It's gonna create you a catch-all database account. Basically everything inside of that account is accessible with that one cPanel login. Not so with ISP config. In fact, so not so, you literally have to do everything manually, including creating your DNS records. So if I come in here and add a new website, I also have to come over to DNS and I have to add a new domain, uh, a uh, DNS zone. Now the advantage is the wizard is pretty good. I come in with the wizard and then I give it the, uh, the server, I give it the wherever the client is, the domain name, uh, the IP address, and then I'm going to put in, and I have to put in the NS1, NS2, and the email address, hit create the, D the DNS records, and this will actually automatically create everything we need. And then you can actually, though, change these uh, the template zones as well. This is the, the basic template. You can actually come over here and create a new template. So if you want to create the ftp.domain.com, you can do that so that that way you can log in with that simpler rather than just utilizing your IP address. If there's anything else that you need to deploy across your individual domains, you can add that into the template. And then that's going to create that. So basically, you're going to need to go in there, create a new template, or edit the default one and make those changes. But every time you add a website, you have to remember to come over here and add the DNS as well. It's a similar thing if you want to add an email address for a newly created domain. You actually have to come in here and you have to add a domain before you add the inbox. So you have an extra few steps to create the website, uh, the, the email domains. So these are some of the little frustrated things that that uh, will get in your way if you're using ISP config. And these are just some of the ones. It is difficult to find some of the settings, although if you've been working with it for a while, then you will actually figure out where all those different items are. So for example, the limit templates are going to be under your clients. We have all these different variety of things are inside of your websites, including your available package lists. There's a lot of different functions and systems and, and such in here that will work out for you. And so ultimately, uh, ultimately what we want to look at here is the cons are it takes several extra steps to accomplish what is a single click inside of cPanel. So does that mean it's not necessarily a viable cPanel option? Absolutely not. I talk about the benefits of open source software on this channel a lot, and some of the benefits I want to mention on open source software is there's times that we want to, or, or we don't, we're not seriously inconvenienced by making things a little bit harder in order to use free and open source software that we know is not spying on us or tracking us. I don't necessarily find this extra steps a deal breaker because you really do it once, you get used to it, it's not a real big deal. 
The biggest parts for me that are the deal breakers is that silly FTP crap, because I'll tell you, well, I want to manage all of the stuff inside of one domain name. I just would like to see one login. I understand why they did it that way. But overall, there are some cons of ISP config. Would I still use it? Absolutely. And I'm going to be running this in production for a while to see how well it works. I want to spin up some sites on it. I want to test it out. I want to see how it works under some server load. So that's kind of what I'm working with on this for now. So there is what we have it as far as some, some cons. This will supplement the pros. And then the next video we'll do, and I'm going to do this after a few weeks so I can play around with things a little bit more. I do want to do a full comprehensive review of ISP config. So again, this is an ISP config that is built on top of Debian 10 on a uh, simple $5 a month Linode server. If you have not tested Linode and you would like to, use my affiliate code tlm.li forward slash Linode for $100 in credit, good for 60 days of playing around with your servers. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.